Hello and a very warm welcome to your Carp Live, a Christmas memorial service. My name is Ollie and I'll be your host for this evening's event. For many years now, the East of England Co-op Funeral Services have run memorial events and carol concerts to help offer those who have lost someone a place to come together and remember those no longer with us. Tonight is the first time we've run a live streamed virtual memorial event. And whilst we aren't together in person, we are sure that this evening's collection of music, readings and remembrance will bring you some comfort this Christmas. We are broadcasting to you from Wimpole Road Chapel in Colchester, a location which may be familiar to many of you. My colleagues Sandy and Mark from our funeral services team will each be delivering a reading and the talented singers Sarah May and Kerry Hibbert will be performing some festive songs. Towards the end of this evening's event, we'll hold a moment of reflection where we'll dedicate some candles in memory of those no longer with us. I know many of you shared the name of someone special you'd like to remember when registering for tonight's event, and we'll be showing those names during the dedication. If you didn't have a chance to do so in advance of this evening, please use the box alongside the screen. We'll then make sure these names and any added by those who registered in the last couple of days will be added to the recording. So many thanks again for giving us your time this evening. And it is now my pleasure to introduce our first musical performance of the evening. Here is Sarah May with White Christmas. Thank you, Sarah. 
That was a beautiful performance and particularly poignant for my family and I, as it was one of my grandma's favourite songs. She sadly passed away several years ago, but it always makes me think of her whenever I hear it. Thank you. Now, I'm very pleased to introduce my colleague, Sandy Dawkin, who's based here at our Wimpole Road branch in Colchester, who will deliver our first reading for this evening. I was going to play you some of this well-known song by Slade. Here's to you, Merry Christmas, everybody's having fun. Probably the most recognisable lyrics we hear every year as Christmas approaches, but I wonder just how many people find that iconic song the last thing they want to hear. Sometimes I think it's just me getting cynical as I get older, but when I ask around a bit, I find I'm not alone. How difficult it is to enter the spirit of Christmas as expressed in the words of that song when you have just lost a loved one or someone very close to you has passed on. How it almost feels a betrayal to even consider enjoying Christmas without them. When my own mother died suddenly and unexpectedly, not very long before Christmas, I found myself experiencing conflicting emotions. On the one hand, I had a young child who would be relying on me to provide a wonderful family Christmas with all the excitement and joy he should expect to experience and the other hand desperately wanted to hide me away and just be left to feel my anger and pain. This following passage was recently given to me to share with you. It identifies a slightly different, but still very real sense of grief and loss. He writes, I remember when I first lost my mother. I was due to visit her on the Sunday morning in the residential nursing home that she had recently moved into. I left her a message the night before and she'd replied saying that she was looking forward to seeing me. However, before I could get there on that Sunday morning, she'd had a major stroke and from that moment on, all effective communication ceased. The next time I saw her, she was unrecognisable lying in a hospital ward. I even needed the assistance of a nurse to point her out to me. I felt that I'd lost my mother the day of her stroke, even though she was still alive. This is a clear indication that loss is not simply defined by death, but enters into our lives in a variety of ways. Speaking to those who've had the experience of caring for someone with a dementia, they know only too well that feeling of losing someone whilst they are still alive. But the experience of loss is much, much wider. Divorce and separation, fallouts in the family, even the loss of a much loved pet can evoke these feelings of loss. They are felt as well by those who've been unlucky enough to have experienced a burglary or some other significant theft. You can grieve for the loss of almost anything you have ever been attached to, but of course it is a question of degree. Some of us feel nostalgic about the past and at Christmas time, can feel a deep feeling of loss for the innocence and simplicity of childhood, whereas for others they are glad to live when they do. It is important to realise that the grief associated with letting go is part of our natural experience as human beings and the grieving process is vital if we are eventually to move on. So how does it work? Will I ever get over it? What does it mean to get over it? One thing we know is that unless something goes seriously wrong with your memory, you never forget. Perhaps you never want to forget. Why should you forget? That person, those memories, are part of your history. They are what make you the person you are. From the moment we are born, the letting go begins and carries on through childhood and into adolescence and adulthood. Grief follows a kind of pattern and there are particular phases which I'm sure you can identify with. There is the initial numbness and shock, the refusal to believe that such a terrible thing has just happened our lives shaken by the shock of what has just occurred and the refusal to believe continues in the fruitless searching activity, the wandering from room to room, from place to place. When something happens to us that we want to share, we can even find ourselves reaching for our phone and the sudden realisation that the person is no longer there. It's the slow and painful truth which gives rise to depression. It is important to understand that all of these phases are completely natural. All of these phases have a purpose. The purpose is to come to terms with a new situation, to incorporate your loved one into a new framework of thought and a new place in our lives. There are those who never recover from a loss and keep a shrine to their loved one. 
clothes and possessions, a special room, and are locked into feelings from which they're never able to free themselves. So what does recovery from loss look like? It can be a long, slow process which involves a lot of pain, a lot of thinking, and a lot of talking things through. And sometimes it's difficult to find someone who will listen. It may help to look around for local bereavement support. Many groups do exist. And here at the co-op, we have such groups where you would be welcome. Loss may involve a huge reorientation, doing things for yourself that you've never had to do before. Anything from putting out the bins to, to telling yourself you look nice. Inside your head, something more important is going on and you begin to find in the memory of the person that you have loved and lost a real sense of their presence which develops over time. The physical presence of that person is no longer with you, but inside your head they stay with you. The reality becomes a memory and the memory becomes the new reality. So perhaps we can sum it up in these words. Those we love remain with us, for love itself lives on. And cherished memories never fade because a loved one's gone. Those we love can never be more than a thought apart, for as long as there is memory, they'll live on in your heart. Thank you, Sandy. Some very poignant words. Grief and loss are so personal and can affect us all so differently. Thank you for sharing those words with us this evening. I'm now pleased to introduce our second musical performance of the evening. Here is Kerry Hibbert with Nat King Cole's The Christmas Song.
thank you, Kerry, for that wonderful performance. I'm now going to hand over to my colleague, Mark Hazelton, from our funeral services team. Mark plays a key role in running our Chapel of Rest in Ipswich and is going to deliver a reading all about remembrance. The desire to be remembered lives within our genetic makeup. It's the age old reason why people carve the name into a tree or place their hands into, a, into cement or chalk the names onto rocks. They want to be remembered, but for the living, the real marks they leave are the ones they've left on us. A hug, a smile, a timely word of advice. We want to remember those who we have loved and lost, not only for them, but also to help ourselves mend, to heal, to live on. The words, time is a healer, is true, but we never truly heal. We learn to live on, taking comfort from our memories. I am a firm believer that as long as we keep the memories alive by sharing them with friends and family, and as long as we remember them, then our departed loved ones are never truly gone. They live on in our memories, and our memories are one of the few things in life that nobody can take away from us. There is no roadmap for us to follow, but at some point we will all have to mourn and grieve. Maybe we can be better at celebrating life, even if we are saddened by its loss. I hope you all take some comfort from events like these, where we remember those held dearest to us. With Christmas fast approaching, this time of year is naturally going to be a time when loss can be more keenly felt, but equally likely a time that is full of memories and opportunities to celebrate with family and friends all the positive things brought to your lives by those who are no longer with us. The ways in which we remember those loved and lost can be as varied as the unique personality of the person who has passed. To me, the simple smell of lavender reminds me of my nan and going to hers as a boy she had a large lavender bush outside her bungalow, and that smell now brings happier memories of her. Some of the families that I have been fortunate enough to have helped in the past have often found very unique ways to celebrate their loved ones. One that sticks in my mind is a family using a small amount of their loved one's ashes in fireworks. It stuck with me as a very warm thought that even in death, the person passed wanting to know they could bring a smile to the faces of their family. Before we hear our next festive musical performance, I wanted to share a few words by Patrick Cunningham. We talk openly of life, of the joyful times we had, and the joyful times we will have together. Death gives no joy, it has no voice. We have muted it because there are no more times to have together. While the remembrance of death is painful, the remembrance of those who lived, those we loved is joyous. They have left footprints implanted in our minds, in our hearts, and in the very essence of our being that shall remain forever. Death is sad, remembrance is not. So let us remember their lives forever. Thank you, Mark. Those words are a good reminder of the power of remembrance and the importance of holding on to the memory of those no longer with us. Thank you. We're now halfway through this evening's event and I hope the readings and musical performances so far have offered you some comfort. I'm now going to welcome back Sarah May to give us our last performance of the night. As she sings, have yourself a merry little Christmas. Happy golden days of yours. 
Thank you, Sarah. That was a lovely way to conclude the musical section of this evening's event. We are now going to move to this evening's dedication. Each of the candles behind me represents someone important to a member of our audience. In a moment, we'll take a pause to remember those no longer with us. As we do this, we'll play some music and display the names of those being remembered tonight. Now, don't worry if you can't spot the name of the person you want to remember on the screen. Just put their name in the box on the side of the screen and we'll ensure they're featured on our memorial website, web page alongside a video of this event. As we've heard tonight through words and music, taking the time to reflect and remember gives us the chance to keep the memory of those no longer with us alive, even when they're not with us. So now I'd like to invite you all to pause for a moment in memory of those we've lost.
Thank you. It's been incredibly moving to see how many dedications we've received. So many people in our memories who we continue to honour and remember. We've had an enormous number of people watching this evening, and whilst we can't all be together in person, we hope being together virtually has brought some comfort and some warmth this Christmas. We are now coming to the end of this evening's event. I would like to offer an enormous thank you to our musical performers, Sarah May and Kerry Hibbert, and my colleagues, Sandy Dalkin and Mark Hazelton, and everyone who's worked so hard behind the scenes to produce this evening's event. You will shortly be receiving an email asking for your feedback on this evening's event. Please do let us know what you thought as your feedback will help shape future events. Thank you again for sharing your time with us this evening. It has been a pleasure to be with you all. And may I wish you a very Merry Christmas. <laughs>